welcome back to Post Time. Harness racing has a huge fan base, but many are unaware of the sport's origins. So let's get a quick history lesson, courtesy of this feature from the United States Trotting Association. Harness racing grew up with America, dependent on the horse as the linchpin of exploration, transportation, defense, and commerce. 150 years ago, when almost everyone had a horse, harness racing started as a friendly competition on country roads and city streets to see who had the fastest horse. Many towns had a race street where friendly competition was keen. Driving clubs were formed to organize races at local parks, and harness racing was a staple of county fair entertainment. The same horse that was used for harness racing brought families to church, goods to market, and cleared land for planting. In the mid-1800s, a registry was formed, and any horse who could meet a time standard for trotting or pacing a mile could be registered. Thus, the term standard bred was coined. Today's harness racing horses trace their ancestry back to Hambletonian, father of 1,300 standard breds and namesake of the classic trotting race. For the first several decades of the 1900s, harness racing flourished in small town America, with racing most often found at county fairs and short meets near big cities, where differences of opinions made for a brisk betting business. After World War II, the world changed and racing changed along with it. With no war to fight, iron and steel and labor were available to build large, permanent grandstands. Americans had more leisure time and money to spend having fun. Harness racing under the lights moved to the big cities and offered affordable evening entertainment close to home for millions. Today, harness racing is found from California to Maine, from upstate New York to Florida, Racing fans can indulge their pleasure in South America, Europe, and on the other side of the world, in Australia and New Zealand. A difference of opinion in any language will always make for a horse race. We hope you'll join us for more information about harness racing, this uniquely American sport, and check us out on the web at ustrotting.com. Don't you feel all smart now? Well, we know about the roots of harness racing, so let's check out some present day action. In this trotting event from Dover Downs, we've got a field of eight maidens going behind the gate. All these high steppers are five years old and under and looking for their first career win. Let's get behind the starting gate over the Delaware 5 8 mile oval. They're off, there goes Red Oaks Richard out for the lead. Farther out, that's Gran Torino. For the rail, Wind and Sea gets away third, racing up fourth, that's Mocha. And then it's Par 1's Joy, followed by Whiskey Trot. The early trailers are Coronado Caviar and Why Not Lindy. They're midway on the first turn. Red Oaks Richard comes out with a two-lane lead. Gran Torino got away in second, followed by Wind and Sea. Another two or three lanes back to Mocha. Then it's about four to Par 1's Joy. Opening quarter, 29 and one fifth. They trot by the stands and Red Oaks Richard has the lead. In second is Gran Torino, followed by Wind and Sea. Another three lanes, Mocha trots in fourth, followed by Par 1's Joy, then it's Whiskey Trot. Trailing our Coronado Caviar and Why Not Lindy, they go into the clubhouse turn, Red Oaks Richard. A length and a half lead, Gran Torino sitting in second, followed by Wind and Sea. Mocha trots in fourth, then it's Par 1's Joy. Next comes Whiskey Trot, and at the end, our Coronado Caviar and Why Not Lindy, 59 and 4 fifths. They continue around the turn toward the back stretch. It's Red Oaks Richard out of the two hole Grand Torino, followed by Wind and Sea. As they move up the back stretch, Grand Torino up to get the lead. Into second comes Wind and Sea, dropping back is Red Oaks Richard. And then it's about four lanes, smoke on the outside, up the rail, par one's joy. Into the far turn, Grand Torino, Wind and Sea, and Red Oaks Richard. Gaining along the inside, par one's joy into fourth, and ready to move to the outside into third. Three quarters, 129 and three. Midway on the final turn, Grand Torino with wind and sea. Parwin's Joy is into third. Outside, Whiskey Trot, farther out, that's Coronado Caviar. They approach the top of the stretch, and Grand Torino has a two length lead, turning for home. Grand Torino, wind and sea racing second, moves to the outside, coming through the stretch. 
Gran Torino with the lead. Wind and Sea on the outside will be second best. Gran Torino, Wind and Sea. And then it was Par 1's Joy in 2 minutes, 3 fifth. Grand Torino gets to the wire first, and this trotter doesn't look anything like the 1974 Ford Grand Torino from Starsky and Hutch, but even so, his driver, Matt Kikali, makes it look easy with a two minute and three fifth victory. The son of striking Sabra is trained by Andy Marcano. Let's stay on the theme of trotters as we head into this week's post-time brain teaser. What legendary trotting mare raced in the 1800s and won 350 races in her career? I'll give you the answer after this. <laughs> 